Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net and in today's video we're going to be doing another comic art critique for an artist by the name of Philip Nietzsche. Now I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, Philip is uh, one of the students in the Superheroines course who uh, has, as you can see here on the screen in front of you, done up some superheroines for the first assignment, where basically um, what the the student is required to do is to create a series of really rough drafts for their superheroine designs. Now, uh, what I'll be doing throughout this video is just giving Philip a few tips here that he can put into action and use to improve the, the quality and the standard of his superheroines just to make them maybe come across a little bit better, maybe get his ideas across in a clearer way. And one of the first things that I'm suggesting that he does in order to do that is just to make his shapes a little stronger. As you can see, Philip tends to use these kind of uh, curvaceous, soft-looking lines. When Really, when it comes to comic book art, in order to get that energy come through within the line art, what you want to do instead is to keep those lines strong and, and straight almost. You want to really try to incorporate as much energy and movement into them as possible. And so what I tend to do is I try to really articulate the shape of the character's anatomy in an interesting way. Of course, using the anatomy to do so. And what I mean by that is I'm actually, as I outline the character's arms and leg, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to encompass the interior anatomy within it in a way that almost exaggerates it. And when, I can, when I'm able to pull that off really well, it often leaves a significant impact on the level of, again, perceived movement and energy within the character. And uh, I think that really every aspect of your superhero characters, at least, your superheroes, your superheroines, your supervillains, they, the more energy that you can put into the line work, into the design, into the pose, into the way they're structured, the better. And at the top here, what I'm doing is I'm just redrawing out this initial pose that Philip did up for his first character and showing him that, you know, the pose itself is fantastic. It's a great, it's a cool pose for this character, but there's just a few things that he could do to maybe make it a little bit more interesting and add some character and personality to it. And that's oftentimes what a lot of these uh, characters are missing from student to student is just that that additional level of personality and attitude, that, that emotion through the character's pose and the way in which they're positioned, their stance, because the body language of the character can say just so much about who they are. And when you can really caricaturize that, then they're going to leave a much more significant impact on the viewer and they're going to be much more memorable. You know, otherwise, what you end up with is just a, a stiff looking character that really doesn't uh, have any amount of impact on the page. It just looks stiff, it, it, it doesn't seem to be this movement, they look kind of robotic, right? They don't look alive, they don't look like they have a soul within them. And so one of the things that you want to do in order to kind of incorporate, you know, the, the ghost within the mannequin model, if you will, um, you know, in, in that foundation stage is you want to keep it loose and you want to keep the line work flowy. You know, you, you, want, you don't want to really start refining it until you've got that initial foundation down for the character because that's when things start to stiffen up. And honestly, even if you do have a fairly fluid looking initial mannequin model pose in the foundation stage, when you go over the top of it and you begin refining it, inevitably it's going to start to stiffen up anyway. So that's why you want to keep it really, really gestural in the beginning. So with the second character, here I'm pointing out something that I pointed out with the first character. And the, the major thing that I've noticed within Philip's superheroines is that most of them appear too short, okay? They don't have the typical heroic proportions you'd see in a superheroine or a superhero or, again, even a supervillain. So these proportions aren't necessarily wrong. You could most certainly, in reality especially, see people with these proportions. That's fine. It's just that most of us in reality, don't have heroic proportions. You know, most of us are about six and a half, maybe seven heads high on average. And then, you know, most most people don't go beyond that. And uh, there's a good few people who are actually shorter than six heads high, believe it or not. But 
you know, really the proportions that he's picked for this particular character, it doesn't show her off in a typically idealized heroic way. And so one of the ways in which you can fix that straight up is instead of making them um, five heads high, which is about what this particular character is, and that'd be more than suitable for a younger uh, child character or even a you know a dwarf character or a, a midget style character, which is totally fine. Um, but you know, in in order to actually make them look heroic, what you want to go for is more a head uh, eight heads high character and that'll you know in other words maybe shrink the character's head with this particular pose and make the body a bit longer um the other issue as well that keeps coming up for philip is also the fact that the upper torso of the characters are actually much longer than the bottom half of the character's body so the legs and really when you're talking about the the typical heroic proportions that you'd see on a comic book character what you want to try to have is an equal amount of height in the legs and the upper body. So the, the crutch or the bottom of the pelvis is about the midway point of the character's overall height. And just as with the other pose that we did up previously, I'm kind of redrawing this one up just to show that, you know, if if you really reconsider the type of vibe and the personality and, and the emotional impact you want to have come through within the character's body language, within their pose alone... Uh, you can you can really start to tweak that mannequin model and think about the ways in which you could pose her to, to have a bit more impact. And so, you know, this character's obviously got an Uzi there, and why not two Uzis, right? Have them have them both coming out from the, at the sides there and uh, and give her pose a little bit more of sway and rhythm. And what you'll end up with is is a character that's again it just has a bit more impact on the page and it. It really illustrates them on more of a surface, beyond a surface level uh, aspect. It, it really starts to have their personality and who they are shine through within the pose itself, which I think is, again, it's one of the most important aspects of creating a compelling looking superhero. And most of the time, we tend to miss it. You know, we leave it out and it's really hard to have it come through without a lot of practice and a little lot of understanding and a lot of consideration of who your character actually is. So you have to sit down and think and really try to get to know them, get into their skin almost in a way and try to project that down to the page. Like if you were this character, how would you hold yourself? Get up and pose in front of the mirror and try to really then push that pose because when it comes to comic book illustration, you want to try to push your characters as much as possible because the more that you can push them, and by push them, I mean exaggerate them, caricature them, the more of an, uh, of an impression they're going to leave on the audience. So now I'm advising Philip to go back to the basic foundation stage where you know, you're talking about the, the primitive forms used to construct the mannequin model itself and how by going back to that, what you can begin starting to do is consider the, the shape first and foremost and the forms that you're dealing with. And if you can do that, what you'll find is that uh, oftentimes the character begins to look less flat just by default because now you're thinking in terms of form. And as I redo up this pose, one of the major issues that he had been having was that the foreshortened perspective on the arms wasn't allowing him to show off the design of them very well because they were so foreshortened that, you know, there's just no way that you could tell what the design of the, the forearm was going to be in comparison to the upper arm and the shoulders. So uh, when it comes to creating a character concept, you want to try to show off as much of their body as possible. Same issue here with the fourth character. Most of that shield is actually covering the arm there. So, I mean, just by looking at this character in this particular context, there's no way that I could tell how the the forearm is supposed to look, how it should be designed. If I was handing this off to another artist, they wouldn't be able to draw it with 100% confidence of how it should look, right? So that means that the pose needs to be reconsidered in a way where the shield is still incorporated, but you can see the full amount of the body. And just in a moment, I'll do up the pose again, and I'll show him exactly how you can go about doing that. 
uh, because there's always a way. It's just it takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of experimentation. The other major issue with this particular character was she was really, really off balance, and you can see there that you know if if she was left as is she would fall to the right there you know she would just fall straight over because she's she's leaning too far toward the right and so that's a that's an issue that often comes up and that i've seen in many of my students uh assignments thus far is is just they they keep on they keep on missing out on on the uh, the aspect of their poses where it needs to be balanced. It, it really does. You need to have that stability, that support on the side of the body, which is is really being impacted by the most amount of weight, uh, because weight distribution when it comes to poses is extremely important in especially comic books because. If you don't have that weight distributed accurately, it will look like your character is just going to fall over, like they're off balance. So um, always think about if you were to divide the amount of weight within your character straight down the middle, is there an equal amount on either side? And if there's not, that means the pose needs to be reconsidered. Of course, if you've got a character who is running or walking or uh, in some kind of action shot, then that doesn't necessarily 100% apply because when you're running, you are essentially falling in a controlled way where one leg comes in front of the other to kind of make sure that you don't fall straight over. You know, it's kind of a, a forward momentum uh, tactic that we use in order to give ourselves speed. But, you know, when you're talking about a character who's just standing, standing straight up and down in this particular instance, then... You know, you don't you don't necessarily want that. You want them to make sure that they have a strong, grounded stance, especially for a superheroine who is supposed to appear powerful. Like you, you, she's not a pushover, right? But <laughs> she doesn't even need to be in these particular in some of these poses because she's already you know off balance. So this is a, an important thing that needs to be considered and something that I'd advise Philip to certainly keep an eye out for and I think all of the points that I'm making here within uh, the critique that I'm giving him once you know where you're going wrong you know each one of these notes that I've given him um, that's going to allow Philip to hone in on exactly what he needs to focus on in order to take his superheroines to the next level I'm not saying that they're bad I'm not saying that they're done wrong at all as you can see, these poses are actually pretty good. They just need a few tweaks here and there in order to really make them stand out. But when you can start to hone in on the areas that are really holding them back, that's when you you, you literally gain the, the powers that you need to upgrade the level of quality within your artwork and stomp out the, the things that are holding it back once and for all, which is why I think that when I introduced the virtual comic art classroom as an add-on to the superheroines course, um, it was going to be super beneficial in, in a way which I could really help the students that were taking the course uh, implement the ideas and the teachings and the knowledge that I was sharing within the course and also allow them to kind of, you know, really see an improvement within their work in a real way, see real results. And I think the only way to do that and the thing that the thing that's missing from most online courses is that that direct feedback that you're seeing me give Philip here. So, yeah, it's and as you can see, it is priceless to be able to do that. Um, again, just doing up this last pose, kind of showing him how if you twist the body and give it a bit of a rotation between the pelvis and the, the chest, uh, you can make it look so much more dynamic. But that just about wraps up this comic art critique. Philip, I hope you got a ton of value out of it. And for everybody else watching, I also hope that you learned a few things. Again, when it comes to this stuff, many of us actually end up being challenged and, and end up falling into the same traps that everybody else falls into. And, uh, you know, even if you saw the last critique video as well, you would have seen a lot of common mistakes within that video that you're seeing in this video again now. And uh, so everybody is going to get a lot of value out of this video. If you, if you look at how the mistakes that you saw Philip making correlates to your own work, then you can also hopefully kind of attend to the same flaws within your work and see that same improvement that he's going to see in his. But you really do have to implement it. You've got to really 
study that fe- the feedback that you get sometimes and and make sure that you're trying to keep it all in your mind so that the next time you have another go and again good drawing comes down to repetition and a, a constant dedication to striving to improve then uh, then yeah you'll, you'll see the improvements happen but you do have to implement what it is that that is being shown when it get, comes to getting your feedback now, if you like what you see here and you'd like to de- learn how to design and ink and color your own superheroine characters, then I'd highly recommend that you check out my superheroines course that you can find over at howtodrawcomics.net. And then in the uh, store section in the courses area, what you'll see is is the superheroines course there available. I think it's for 35 bucks at the moment. So it's pretty reasonable for what you get. It's about five hours worth of content. We go through the entire process from start to finish. So setting up the initial poses um, and then refining those poses with a, a finished design inking the poses, you know, going through the whole rendering process and sharing with you the techniques to to render out different materials and textures and to really bring it through to a finished, polished-looking illustration of a superhero and character. And then we go through the whole coloring process as well on top of that. Uh, but best of all, I would say the, the thing that you get out of this course is the uh, membership to the Virtual Comic Art Classroom, which is uh, how Philip has been able to get the kind of feedback that you've seen here within this video and of course the previous student as well which I uploaded uh, last week um, there's also a bunch of so it's basically the virtual comic art classroom is a, a private Facebook group just for the students of my courses and so uh, essentially you don't just get feedback from me you also get feedback from the other students who have also enrolled in the course and you get to see the kind of work that they're doing as well so it's really really cool it's it's a high amount of engagement so you really get to hang out with the other students and I, I like to think of it literally as as a virtual comic art classroom where, where you come to class you submit your assignments and you get the feedback direct from me and the other students so it's really really fun um, there's a whole bunch of other extras I'll just uh, I'll post the, the link to the sales page in the description below this video. If it sounds interesting to you, at least check out that page. It'll give you a, a more detailed description of exactly what you're going to get out of the course and what you can expect. And uh, yeah, it's been a really fun time doing up this video for you. So I hope that you got a ton of value out of it. Until next time, keep on creating, keep on practicing, and I'll catch you in the next video.